41 seconds remaining on the possession time as Sam King, one of the many first years playing for the Crimson Attack, hits Madronic from X, working around, and then a high hit up high on Hayden Sheik goes uncalled. Turnaround shot goes. Sam King, the first year from Baltimore, gets the Crimson on the board, 1-0. Well, Harvard was outclassed on the faceoff dot for sure this weekend, but it's more about what you do with possessions when you do get faceoff wins than the actual faceoff wins, obviously. And there's way too much space out there to shoot for Sam. Alley, nothing there. Was pushed off by Andrew O'Berry. Pass comes in, bounce shot. And I'm not sure if that got all the way through on Mullen. Kyle Mullen, I think, got a piece of it. The Harvard senior goaltender from Winchester, Pennsylvania. And here come the Crimson now. They get the clear into the box. Oh, Barry brought it all the way through the first year. Gives it off to Nick Loring, and the Crimson will get some of their offensive pieces out. Although it didn't end in a shot on goal for the Terriers, that was one of their better possessions. It looked a little bit more organized. They were to draw to the ball carry a little bit and free up some open spaces in the slot area. Didn't end up getting the ball there, but it looked better than it did in the previous possession. Madronic got the pass away. Low shot, they score! Sam King set up by Madronic. And it's 2-0 Harvard. That is one of the more difficult passes to read for a goalie. Look where it comes from, top left-hand part of the formation to down low right with laps. I think Coach Foley gave a little bit of a nod to them not having seen much adversity yet this season, and he wants to see how his team responds when they do. I feel like this game has a potential to show the Terriers such adversity. And first meeting between these two teams since 2019. Separated by about two miles behind the back shot. Vince D'Alto not there after Thomas Niedringhaus missed as well earlier. So 16 to shoot, 3.09 remaining in this first quarter from Jordan Field in Cambridge. And a 2-0 lead for 15th ranked Harvard. Niedringhaus again. This time he scores. The junior attacker Thomas Niedringhaus on the board for BU for the first time. Just a good individual effort that time by Niedringhaus off the left-hand side. What a look here. Got to love that drone angle. He beats his man with his feet, and then he's got the extension to the outside, gets around his man. There's no slide, no slide, no slide. Catch by Nick Loring to keep this possession alive, and here's Graham Blake out there for the first time for the Crimson. King once again spinning away as Blake from X. Working around up top, got the pass away. Shot comes in, they score! Andrew Perry, the first year from down the road in Franklin, Mass, makes it 3-1 Crimson. That's a real good shot by a first year midfielder in Perry. If Harvard's able to get Coming in, shooting, and he scores! Terriers winding the clock down, and Jake Cates takes advantage, his 17th goal of the season to tie for the team lead. Just spoke a moment ago about how much a midi adding offense to your arsenal can help your team same point can be made for Jake Cates, the leading midi scorer amongst both teams this season on their man up opportunities this year. So once again, chance to tie it in a 3-2 game. And it's Bogger who gets it started around for Perfetto. This is Jake Cates, Perfetto for Lay, through the middle, Dialto, he scores! Vince Dialto, and a tie game in Cambridge. Uh, one of the things that makes this trio so special on BU's side is their versatility. All three players, Perfetto, Lay, and Dialto, can score, they can dodge, they can pass. Three game mid-second quarter from Jordan Field. Botkiss pushed off. Comes for Loring. Weaving through. Loring got a little bit of space. Dives in and he scores! Nick Loring with just six remaining on the timer. And it's 4-3 Crimson. 
Last couple goals for Harvard have been off that left-hand side, basically scramble plays. And what an effort it was by Loring to... Crimson come away with possession. Sam King up with it. Long pass up top, Loring. Big drive is blocked. Did not get through. Crimson do get the ground ball, though. Momentarily, it looked like Hayden Cheek had it, but now it's the Terriers who can go unsettled with numbers coming back the other way. Morrison right down Broadway. Gives it to Lay, working behind. Goes to the ground and gets it through. Timmy Lay gets credit for the goal. It was a delayed signal by the officials, but it's ruled that it did cross the line and BU's tied it to get it for. Yeah, I want to make sure that Lay didn't step in the crease prior to the release of the ball. That was what the delay was about, but I want to go back to... I face off wins each. Surprising, and I think Harvard coming into it, we would have expected it would have taken a little bit more of a team effort. They're trying to sort of muck things up try different guys in there, get their wings involved, play physical, while BU wants the singular guy, Calderon, to win it for them. Kind of two different contrasting approaches. What a shot for Sam King, leaping in the air, and finds the lead again, 5-4. A little bit more fluidity offensively. Couple goals in quick succession here. Play starts up high, goes down low, look at that. Little spinorama pirouette. I'm not sure that he needed. Watching this one as the Crimson looking to compete in a very difficult Ivy League. The Terriers trying to find their way, pick middle of the pack of the Patriot League, trying to find their way through. Best start, tied for the best start in program history. There is a behind the back shot and no goal. It was waved off immediately. Great look but it's waved off. Oh, BU had called a timeout before the shot came in. You could even see everybody kind of started to hear the whistle just the offensive end, just Definitely. trying to throw some shots in. Here's D'Alto, could not get the pass away against Tommy Martinson defensively. Now got it through Lay, was looking for that behind the back, couldn't get it off though. Good close defense by Tommy Joyce. And the pass thrown behind, Perfetto comes to pick it up. Offside of the midfield. So the Crimson coming back unsettled now quickly. Big drive, Matronic scores! Austin Matronic set up by Ray Durth. And the Crimson back on top, six to five. We haven't seen a ton of transition offense from either team in this game. There's Madronic again up top, not in a familiar place for an Edmund on that side. And again, it's a little bit more, not that Calderon on the other side doesn't use his wingers, which he does, but that's more of what Harvard wants to do. They want to muck it up and get all three guys more involved than BU does on the other side, and they have. D'Alto, been on Chase Yeager against him the whole time. There's Timmy Lay, and he's on the board. So Timmy Lay finally extends that goal scoring streak to 29 games in a row. And we are square again, 6-6. Keep your eye on, oh, it's gonna be difficult from the drone shot. If you can locate 19 there, it's just a great rotation. You see two Crimson follow the ball carry. There's a shorty caught behind the net. That's never what you want. The slide comes over. Oh, on that previous sequence coming up the field, BU doing everything that they can to put up a wall and to stop that clear. Graham Blake for King. Set himself quite a game. Turning around, and he scores! Sam King adds another and when it looked like BU had a chance for the lead, it's King and the Crimson. Fourth goal of the game for King, and it's a 7-6 Harvard lead here in the third. Sort of basing that conversation off what Harvard did last time out, but to your point, uh, no matter what the, the conversation comes from, they've done a great job today. There's a quick stick, and it goes. Second of the game for Timmy Lay. And now we're going back and forth. Back square at 7-7. That's beautiful across there from Perfetto. A couple of dodges, look at that, stops and starts, spins, and then it's just a great rotation. There's only two guys down low, I love that shot. Again, thanks to our crew 
with the drone take. There's only two guys, there's a third guy up here, Cates up top. He becomes that much more to get up again and try to do it one more time. Well, Barry came off so Perry could get in and set up the offense for the Crimson. Loring, got room, quick shot, they score! Loring set up Hayden Cheek. 8-7 Harvard. On back-to-back -back possessions for Harvard, they never go behind the net with the ball. It's all just ball movement up top. Mostly the midfielders are the guys getting touches. It's a good look again, coming back across the grain to the middle of the field. There's bodies between the lane. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a screen and Garber doesn't pick it up initially. And so the quick release. New face off and possession right after scoring the goal. We have not had a two goal lead since it was 3-1 Harvard. Gone back and forth, but the Crimson have always been the team going up by one. Trying to take the lead by two. Owen Gaffney, and they score! And there is the two goal lead once again for Harvard. It's 9-7. This is defended a, a bit better by BU. Just simple win off of the break there. Slide, it, it's, it's a little bit late for sure. Off of the ninth cause turnover of the game by the Terriers. Quadrino against Jaeger from X. Quadrino, spin dodge, got it front, big save Mullen. What a stop by Kyle Mullen. The senior picks up his eighth save of the game. Huge stop, I think he got that one with the thigh. And an empty net goal! Jerry Byrne told us it was coming. He said, "Be was aggressive on the ride. He said, I'm not saying we practiced it all week, but we're aware there's an opportunity for it. And it's Botkiss who makes it 10-7 Crimson. What a sly time to work this attempt in for Harvard. We haven't talked a lot about it because we don't you don't see it in the frame a lot with this full 10-man ride. But Garber will come out of his net, does come out of his net. 46 on the timer here. Terriers down by three, largest deficit of the game today, also largest deficit of the season for BU, which came in as one of three remaining unbeaten teams in the country. For Fetto, trying to find room against Jaeger. Got it off D'Alto, low shot, he scores! Nicely done by Vince D'Alto, the junior in the, on the Tawaritan watch list. Found room in the five hole to make it 10 to eight. Well, Perfetto just makes correct decision after correct decision. I guess there weren't a ton of other decisions to make on that one, but he, he made the correct one. Nothing. Here in the early stages of the fourth quarter here from Jordan Field. Quadrino, he scores! Upper right 90, and it's 10-9. to What a shot by Quadrino, I have no idea how he snuck this ball in. I mean, he wins the race off the jump, curls around the crease, and go short side, right over the shoulder there of Mullen, who dropped his stick just a little bit. Five kiss again. 20 to shoot for Harvard. Blake and Madronic switch spots. Madronic trying to cut in, dodging right, leaps in the air and scores! What a move by Austin Madronic. And it's 11-9 Crimson. It's pretty good defense there by DeGoler. Check it out, 46 in red, stays locked, square to his man, good feet movement. He's in position, I mean the stick on stick nearly as Madron Playing last year, but still being able to keep so many of the players that have made this league one of the best in college lacrosse for a while now. Watch the possession, now the Crimson working on the offensive end with Nick Loring getting away from McFarland. Got Madronic, and he scores! Austin Madronic. It's a hat trick, and a five-point night for a 12-9 lead.
uh, get the ball to 33 here in the second half. He's been the difference maker for Harvard. Find a seam amongst a sea of red uniform. Three years of offensive midfield, now playing defensive midfield for the first time, and he creates the turnover, the senior from Natick, but the Crimson get it right back. Two on one, and they score. Hayden Cheek. It's really a two on O oh as it ended up developing. And Harvard has its biggest lead of the game at 13 to nine, and a timeout, Terriers. Uh, Crimson putting together a, a performance on the ride themselves, causing havoc, mayhem, and then the scoop as well. It's not just the steal and the cause turnover, but it's also the ground ball. Been a skillful one to catch that one in stride. Cates lost it for a moment. D'Alto trying to get to the ground ball and does before it went over the end line. 30 to shoot, D'Alto coming around, tough angle. Mullen may have gotten a piece, but it's wide and out. will stay here with the Terriers on the backup. Yeah, that felt a little bit rushed from D'Alto. Not his highest percentage area. He's probably sensing the four goal deficit. Nice look in front and D'Alto scores. Vince D'Alto adds another. Give him a hat trick at a four point night. And it's 13 to 10. A much better area to shoot at if you're D'Alto. Way closer than that, much higher percentage area and some late sliding defense. He is back on possession right now, but down to eight seconds left. Niederinghaus is stopped by Mullen. He holds and Harvard knocks off BU. It's third consecutive ranked win and the Crimson are five and one. Well, if this is just the tip of the iceberg for Harvard, this is going to be an impressive team down the line. Back to back to back wins against the number 13 ranked team in the country. It was close all day long. Harvard never gave up the lead. I think that's key to remember in this one. An impressive performance, both defensively and offensively, for the home team coming away with the win here against the Crosstown rival.